Hi guys! Our topic for today ay tungkol sa arguments in symbolic form. So before natin gagawin in symbolic form ang isang argument statements, i-discuss muna natin or i-define muna natin kung ano yung meaning ng arguments. So an argument statement consists of a set of statements called premises and conclusion. So take note, ang ilagay dito ay premises, the plural of the word premise. So, an arguments can also be written in symbolic form using letters. So, ito na yung topic natin ngayon, yung ito-translate yung isang argument statement into a symbolic form using letters and add other symbols to represent the connective, like the if-then form, the or, and the n. An argument is considered to be valid if the conclusion is true whenever all premises are assumed to be true. So, magiging valid lang yung isang argument statement kapag yung premises ay true at saka yung conclusion naman ay true. So, consider yung whole statement as, as a valid statement. An argument can also be considered as an invalid statement if the premises are true and the conclusion is false. No, kapag yung given premises ay true and then yung conclusion ay false, the statement will be considered an invalid statement or an invalid argument statement. Actually, sa arguments, nagbibase, yung validity ng isang argument statement nagbibase sa premises. Doon ka magbase kapag true yun, titignan mo yung conclusion. Na kapag true yung premises and then true yung conclusion, so valid siya. Kapag true yung premises naman and then false yung conclusion, so magiging invalid yun siya. So, the validity of arguments will be discussed sa next video na. Mag-upload lang ako. So, abangan nyo lang yung validity of arguments using the truth table. And so on. About more on arguments statement video. So, abangan nyo lang yun. So, ngayon, gagawin muna natin ay i-translate muna natin yung, isang, yung argument statements into a symbolic form. So, let's try to have an example on how to translate an argument statement into a symbolic form. So, ang instruction dito sa ating given exercises ay use the indicated letters to write each argument in symbolic form. So, for number one, we have this statement, if you can read this bumper sticker, you're too close. You can read the bumper sticker, therefore, you're too close. Yung first statement natin, which is the first sentence, yung if you can read this bumper sticker, you're too close. Yung statement na to ay if-then statement. Kaya meron tayong word na if dito, and then the P, and then comma, and then ito yung Q. Yung you can read this bumper sticker, yung representation niya for symbolic form ay R, letter R. So, ito yung gagamitin natin, equivalent sa word, uh, sa statement na you can read this bumper sticker. So, next statement naman, which is the Q statement, yung you're too close ay C. Yung first sentence sa number 1, ito yung first premise. So, ito yung isang premise. Yung next premise naman, or the second premise, itong you can read the bumper sticker. And then, therefore, you're too close, ito yung conclusion. Okay, yung conclusion is represented by the word therefore. Kaya, ito yung conclusion natin. Now, paano to ito translate into a symbolic form? Okay, let's consider first the first sentence. If you can read this bumper sticker R, you're too close C. So, this is an if-then statement, meaning yung connective na gagamitin natin dito ay arrow, yung going to the right na arrow. So, yung first statement natin, hindi P at saka Q yung gagamitin natin. Kasi nilagay na dito, yung gagamitin natin ay R at saka yung C. Kaya, if R, then C. Or, if-then statement. Kahit walang then yan, Ganito pa rin yung gagamitin natin. Kasi yung if-then statement na form or the conditional form, pwede siya if P, comma Q. Katulad ng number 1 or yung first sentence sa number 1. So, ito yung first premise natin. Ito yung first premise. Now, next. Sa next sentence naman, ang sabi dito, you can read the bumper sticker. Now, remember, ang you can read the bumper sticker ay nare-represent ng letter R. So, next, insulat natin dito sa baba after ng R, uh, if R, then C, 
dito natin nilalagay yung next statement, which is R. Diba? You can read the bumper sticker ay nire-represent ng letter R. So, therefore, ang therefore ay nire-represent ng ganitong symbol. Yung tatlong dot. So, therefore, you're too close. So, yung you're too close na statement ay nire-represent ng symbol or ng letter C. Kaya, therefore, C. So, yung symbolic statement or yung symbolic form ng ating number one argument statement ay ganito. If R, then C. R, therefore C. So, ito yung answer natin. This one. Kung yung nasa taas na symbol ay first premise, yung R naman na nasa baba ay ang second premise. Diba? Sa definition for argument statement, meron siyang premises. So, meron siyang first and second premise. Na yung sa baba naman, yung therefore C, ito yung tinatawag na conclusion. So, ganito lang yung symbolic form ng number one statement. For our number two given statement, ang sabi dito, if the price of gold rises G, the stock market will fall S. The price of gold did not rise, therefore, the stock market did not fall. So, yung first sentence ay, if the price of gold rises, the, the stock market will fall. Okay, obviously, this is an if-then statement or conditional statement kasi may word tayo na if. So, sa first premise natin, meron tayong arrow na going to the right. Okay, yung first na statement dito sa first sentence, ang sabi dito, the price of gold rises G. So, G yung dito nalagay natin. So, if G, then the stock market will fall S. So, ganito yung first premise natin. Ito yung first premise. na for second premise naman, the price of gold did not rise. Now, take note, ang G natin ay the price of gold rises. However, dito sa next sentence natin, the price of gold did not rise. Did not. So, gumamit tayo ng word na not. Diba? If you remember, kapag may not na ganito, mag ang isang statement, it is considered to be a negation. Diba? Yung representation for negation ay ganito. May mga other books naman ay ganyan. So, either lang sa dalawa kung ano yung ginagamit nyo. Now, for this example, gagamitin natin yung ganitong symbol for negation. So, anong negation to siya? Anong letter ano yung negate natin? ba diba yung the price of gold rises, nire-represent ng letter G. So, ibig sabihin, ang the price of gold did not rise ay the negation of G, letter G. So, meaning ganito yan, not G. So, not G, ito yung second premise. Then, over, lagyan nyo ng ganito. Therefore, the stock market did not fall. ba diba? yung therefore ay yung 3 dot na ganito. Ito yung representation for therefore. The stock market did not fall. Now, take note, yung S natin, kanina, ay the stock market will fall. Pero dito sa conclusion natin, the stock market did not fall. Meaning, itong pag third na sentence natin ay negation ng second statement sa first sentence, which is the stock market will fall. So, ibig sabihin, negation of S. Kasi may word na ginamit dito, did not, not fall. So, ito yung symbolic form ng ating number 2 statement, which is this one. So, yung answer natin. For number 3 statement, meron tayo dito, I am going shopping S or I am going to the museum M. I went to the museum, therefore I did not go shopping. Yung first statement natin, sa first sentence, I am going shopping or I am going to the museum. Now remember, ang ginamit na connective dito ay or. Take note, this is or. Diba yung or sa connective na symbolic form ay ganito, diba? Yung letter V. Yung pa-inverted naman, ito yung N. This one is or. Kaya yung gagamitin natin na connective for the first sentence sa number 3 ay ganito, yung letter V. So, ilalagay na natin muna na or yung dito sa first sentence or sa first premise natin. Na yung first na phrase or yung statement sa first sentence ay I am going shopping S. Representation nito ay S. So, ilalagay natin S or M. Kasi yung M, I am going to the museum. So, S or M. 
Ito yung first premise. Na yung second premise ay yung second sentence dito sa number 3, which is I went to the museum. Which is, ang I went to the museum na represent ng letter M. Okay, M ilalagay natin dito. Therefore, I did not go shopping. Yung I'm going shopping na represent ng letter S. Na ang sabi dito, did not. May word na not. I did not go shopping. So, ibig sabihin, negation to siya ng S. Meaning, not S. Therefore, not S. So, ito yung answer for our number 3 argument statement. For number 4 statement, sabi dito, if we search the internet S, kama, we will find information on logic I. We search the internet, therefore, we found information on logic. Now, yung first statement natin, o yung first sentence sa number 4 ay may word na if. This one, may word na if. So, ibig sabihin, yung first sentence, o yung first premise natin ay if-then statement. Ibig sabihin na ang connective na gagamitin natin ay yung arrow na going to the right. And then, yung first phrase sa ating first sentence, sa number 4, we search the internet S. So, S yung ilalagay natin dito. Siya yung P. Ito kasi yung P statement. Ito naman yung Q statement. Pero hindi P ang gagamitin natin at saka Q. Kundi S at saka I. And then S. If S, then I. So, ito yung first premise natin. Yung second premise naman natin yung second sentence. Which is, we search the internet. Okay, yung we search the internet ay letter S. Diba? Dito, dito pa lang, we search the internet S. And then, the next statement naman ay, we search the internet. S pa rin yan. And then, therefore, three, yung tatlong dot, therefore, we found information on logic. So, we found information on logic, representation niya ay letter I. So, ganito lang yung answer for number four. For our last given statement, number five statement, if it snowed S, kama, then I did not go to my chemistry class, not C. I went to my chemistry class, therefore, it did not snow. Consider mo na natin yung first sentence as the first premise. So, yung if it snowed, di ba, may word tayo dito na if. So, this is an if-then statement. Ibig sabihin, ang connective ng first statement natin ay arrow na going to the right. So, if it snowed S, meaning yung first natin na letter dito ay S. And then, then I did not go to my chemistry class, not C. Negation of C. Kasi meron tayo ditong word na not. Kaya, not C. Yung representation ng uh, second phrase sa first sentence. Yung FS, then not C, ay ang first premise. So, yung second premise naman ay, I went to my chemistry class. Diba? Yung kanina, I did not go to my chemistry class, which is the negation of C. Na ngayon, wala nang not na word. I went to my chemistry class. So, ibig sabihin, mawawala na yung symbol ng negation, which is yung ganito. So, ang maiiwan ay C na lang. So, yung second premise natin ay C. Ito yung second premise. And then, therefore, it did not snow. Okay, yung sa first statement, ang sabi dito, it snowed. Dito naman, sa conclusion, it did not snow. So, therefore, yung conclusion natin ay negation ng it snowed. So, ibig sabihin, di ba, yung it snowed ay nare-represent ng letter S. Therefore, yung conclusion natin ay not S. Kasi meron ginamit na word na not. So, just remember, kapag may not na makita kayo sa isang statement or sa isang phrase, Automatic, that's a negation. So, gagamitin nyo talaga yung symbol ng negation na ganito or yung paganyan. So, it depends. May book na ganito ang ginagamit. May mga book naman na ganito. So, nasa sa inyo na yan. So, ito yung answer natin for number 5. The first premise, the second premise, and this one is the conclusion. Conclusion, ito. Yung not therefore, not s. So that's it for our topic for today about argument in symbolic form. I hope you've learned something from this video. Thank you for watching.